Dude, I kind of got this lighting to look pretty darn good. Hello, what's good? Yeah, I'm gonna make some friggin' music. Fit check, how we feeling y'all? We feeling this, got the tiny pants. Tiny pants with the scro shirt, the scro hat, exposing my knee tattoo, the only thing that's going for me in my life anymore at this point. More kismet. More is a 16 year old music producer, visual artist, actor, just all around insane creative person. To me, I would say it's like melodic bass music, melodic trap, sort of in that realm. Incredibly creative and interesting sound design, and that goes for like any genre of EDM or bass music. You could say like, oh, that's really interesting dubstep sound design, or that's really interesting trap sound design, or interesting drum and bass sound design. But more kismet is just making dope sounds and making dope music with it. I found out about them, I don't know, a few months ago, and I've been so into every single thing they've ever put out. 16 years old, 16 year old music producer, 16. I think they started when they were like 10 or eight or something. They are way better than me and everyone I know. So that's cool, I guess. More is scheduled to play some insane festivals, including Beyond Wonderland, Lost in Dreams, which is Insomniac's new like melodic future bass label, as well as EDC in Las Vegas. I just cannot wait for this person to absolutely explode and consume everyone's lives because they're amazing. So we're gonna check out a few things today and how to make a more kismet style track. This being said, they have a pretty like wide array of sounds and genres that they fit in. It's melodic, really interesting sound design. A lot of stuff is off grid, fat, juicy, and groovy. And the last one is kind of emotional sounding. Even if it's like really heavy trap stuff, it's very, like I said, melodic and I don't know, emotional, whatever the frig that means. You are only an emotional producer if you are crying in the studio, which is why I am the most emotional producer in the scene today, so thank you. Before we jump in, please like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. Thank you. All right, y'all, let's dive in. Let's solo out all the sound designy stuff really quick. So let's check out this like weird melodic sound. Small disclaimer is that I kind of made all these sounds ahead of time in like a sound design session where I just made a bunch of sounds. So what I did to make the sounds in this folder specifically is I took Aaron Grande's Breathe In and I just like took little pieces of them and stretched them and distorted them and added reverb and cut them and like filtered stuff out. And I don't know, I just made a bunch of weird stuff. Here's a collection of those sounds. Don't even ask me how I made any of those, but I was doing just, I was just having fun. But I ended up with this pack of all these cool sounds that I can just use whenever I need to, and I don't have to sit there and you know, make something for 30 minutes just to have like some cool sound. So this was me messing around with a granular synthesizer. So then I took it into the session and I kind of chopped it up even more. You can hear I took just like a little portion of it and I pitched it down as well to fit in key. Then I added a resonator. So if you look at the grid, the beats don't really hit like on the grid. There's this one, that's not really on the grid, that's not really on the grid. Then I got another weird sound here. And that was originally this. I kind of looped them together. And you can see I have some pitch automation that's bringing it up and then back down. This is also not on grid. Those two elements together, so I got this sound that kind of sounds like a little bit wispy, and I was really referencing uh, Moore's song called Rumor, which is basically, I'm just trying to like rip off the entire vibe of this track. So I kind of have this sound that sounded similar to that like wispy sound. And you can hear that of course is also off the grid. So let's hear all this off grid stuff together. 
The other elements in this track kind of sound like they're off grid or off time, but everything's just really heavily side chain. So if you look at this green line right here, fuck. If you look at this green line right here, you can see this is me just literally automating the volume rather than properly side chaining it. I say this all the time, but you just have more control doing volume automation than physically side chaining something to the kick drum. So that means things like this sounds off beat, but that's just because the side chain is so deep that it's not letting any sound come in until almost like a whole eighth note after the kick drum. There's two more elements in my side chain bus. One is this very on beat percussive sound. And this is some samples from Oversampled. If you don't know him, he makes some really awesome like melodic bass music content similar to this. He had a free sample pack of a bunch of Foley stuff and I just programmed that in like a pretty simple rhythm like this. And then I just added a bit crusher and some OTT to it. And then let's listen to this weird sound. I don't know what that is, but I know I made it. It sounds like I'm volume automating some weird distorted reverb chord that I made. I have no clue, but I gotta say it's a game changer to just take a few hours to just make sounds and have absolutely no target with what you're going to do with them or what they're going to sound like. And that's how I almost made this entire drop is just like going through this folder I have of weird sounds that I already made and just like boom, boom, boom. Like I made this track so quick because I just already had these sounds that I didn't have to sit there and make for 20 minutes or I didn't have to go searching for, for other samples. It's like something I made myself. I don't know. Oh, yeah, the Can't forget the 808s. Let's get into that. So I'm using an 808 sample called Be Nice To Me 808. Completely dry, this is what that sample sounds like. Honestly, slaps. Uh, I got this from a weird hyperpop sample pack I found online called Young Fago hyperpop.jp and then Slate Snap Heap has a preset called 808 Sizzle. You know I be using them presets gives it like all that high end crunch. And then I said, you know what? It needs, a, it needs a little bit more sizzle. It's not sizzling enough. So I just made two. Even more sizzle. That's what I'm talking about. You'll hear in this 808 fill, it's completely out of time. I was like playing this on my keyboard and then I just kind of like flubbed around the notes and I don't know, I came up with this cool rhythm. Here's what my drums sound like. So I'm using two snare drums and layered them together. And I do have a reverse snare hit just going into the very first one. This is the Cymatics Heater Kick 2. And I did double that up with this Foley sound. And when you put that together with the kick drum, it like gives the entire kick drum some texture, which that's not really what's happening. You're not giving the kick drum texture. You're just having another sound always play at the exact same time as the kick drum. And that's basically the whole drop. Let's listen to it. Of course, you know I got the fairy lick in here. Oh, frick yeah. And this sound is Anna, and this is just one of the samples that comes with it. Air, vocal, C, it sounds real juicy, and then you put a bunch of more reverb on it. And that just comes in sort of the second half of the drop. So here there's all these like little fills and the little spaces. And again, these are just sounds that I made. Now let's check out those sounds in isolation. So this one's called Sandpaper. And originally it sounded like this. And yeah, I basically just popped it right in. And then we got this sound. The breath pan. So I mentioned all these sounds originally came from Ariana Grande's breathing. Somehow I took like a tiny clip that would not be anywhere recognizable as the track. This you could kind of hear. Definitely sounds like Ariana's breath. Did you hear that little breath? I just took that, multiplied it by a billion, and then made it like 
pan from left to right and then added a bunch of reverb. And now I just have this chunk of audio that I could use whenever I want. I just keep talking about the same thing over and over again. Do yourself a favor and just do some sound design one day because this track came by so quickly because I had all these sounds that were just like, boom, 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 ready to go. I just drag and drop them and they sounded killer. So right there, this is what that whole fill sounds like. So you'll notice a lot of times in this track, I use like a weird distorted gross sound right before the hit, right into the hit. And actually the sound right before the pre-drop sound, like the actual beat before the drop, there's this weird like distorted. It sounds like there's this dark entity that like moves into you and moves out. It's kind of a scary sound. I don't know how I made it, but I called it toothpick. And I got this idea from more kismet as well. I don't know what made me so like fascinated about this. I think I was DJing one of their tracks and I noticed in the waveform that there's just like this random little blip right before the drop. And then I was like, wait, what is that sound? And it's just like a little bit of like distorted noise or something. And I was like, that's such an interesting like strange but creative sound to put right before a drop. Like, why would you ever do that? But it sounds sick. Listen to how more does it. One more time. Absolutely love that. So I did that a lot in this track too. And here's what. So, you know, I'm just a copycat. I can't do anything original for myself. In the second half of this beat, just kind of did the standard trap thing and added some hi-hats, but Listen to this. I have two hi-hats going on. One sounds like this. And then I had another hi-hat sound that is on and then off the grid. Oh, God, the and I wish people would talk more about like the verse productions over the drop because I really like the vibe of verses. I know that doesn't make sense, but we all know when a verse comes in, it's kind of like, like you should get this feeling when you listen to a verse, you know? So let's see if I did that pretty well. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm getting that feeling. So let's hear all the melodic stuff going down. We got our Reese, of course. And that's just an Anna preset, nothing crazy there. That's an effect that came with the stems of this. This is a remix, by the way. Sticks and Rope Scrow Remix, originally by Honor Scouts. Go check it out. I freaking love this. So stoked I was able to do this on Spotify and all that. So this is a sample of Eliminate in a Disciple pack that I got that was free. Here it is originally. Tings on the Bomba Clat. Big Tings on the Bomba Clat. So I just took a little chunk of that and made it really high <laughs> and added some Bit Crush and then a filter. I don't even know why I added this. You can't even hear it. And check this sound out. Sounds like it would be a synthesizer, but I originally had this idea where I wanted some like guitars in it. So I recorded this on guitar, just like a bunch of down pick staccato things. It sounds sick, but I just didn't think it really fit like the vibe. So I just bit crushed it. <laughs> and then I was like, hell yeah, we're in here boys. Where's Porter Robinson? Let's go get a drink. Jump that together. You can hear kind of sporadically, there's this sound in the middle of it. I love this tone, I love this sound, I love this idea, and I do it all the time. This is another chord thing I made, I called it Burnt Toast. I made this in my sound design session. Juicy chord, juicy. And then I just added this transgate on it to give it the rhythm. And then I put this LFO tool that's like panning it around your ears. Check out this arpeggio that I actually did make. Hell yeah. I have an arpeggiator that um, you can tell is automated to speed up as the time goes on. And also the filter is opening up as time goes on. So you can check out the automation and this little filter right here. And that kind of opens up, opening up while it's speeding up, opening up while it's speeding up. 
That's what I'm talking about. Cool, the second half of this verse, freaking vibes. Can we just appreciate all of this stuff? I feel like this is all gonna go unnoticed, but I worked really hard on this. So I hope you guys dig it. We got some big juicy guitar chords. Oh! I forgot I did that. I forgot how beautiful that sounds. Let's listen to that again. Woo. Did you go to school for guitar or something, bro? Oh my goodness. Add in that riff from the beginning. I got this really cool like sound effect from my Quanta granular synthesizer. I started recording and printing out my favorite presets. It's always kind of a pain to open up a synthesizer and go to your favorite preset, especially if it's a really heavy synthesizer and your CPU doesn't load it very well. So I just kind of recorded myself playing some like pretty standard seventh chords and ninth chords, and then I just pitch them around and you can use them as like really quick sound design -y effect things. Please appreciate everything that's going on here. Validate me. I got this pad. This is another one shot from a cymatic sound pack. It's one of my favorite sounds I have actually. It's from like the Porter Robinson pack they made and it sounds like kind of vocal sounding. And then I'm playing like these big ninth chords. If you wanna have these chords in your production, by the way, I have a free MIDI pack. Uh, you can go to the link in my description and download it for free. It's just a bunch of cool ninth chords and seventh chords and chord progressions. And you can just drag and drop them in your productions and have these really big, pretty, emotional sound chord progressions, whatever. I still play mine in, of course, but all the chords that I'm playing, I kind of just do the same ones all the time. And they're all in that pack, so feel free to download it and uh, hope it helps you. And the last thing that I'm adding to this that I actually got from, I think it's Eliminates Potions Remix. There's just like quarter note sub pumping throughout the verses. And if you hear that, you're gonna be like, oh, wow, you've just stole the entire vibe from that track. You can hear that really low sub just like pumping these quarter notes. So I'm using Reaper's default sawtooth oscillator and then I'm doubling it up with just a really low sine wave. Hopefully you can hear this. Oh, man, I hate to flex, but I just got the nicest envelope on this thing. Here's the sub all by itself. It's just like the creamiest attack and decay. It's just like this nice little like pump. You add that with the sub and then everything else and you get this feeling. This is the feeling you should have in verses. Boom, there we have it folks. A more Kismet style drop. I'm really excited to bring this video to you. I haven't seen any other like more Kismet style tutorials online. When I DJ out, I think I end up spending like four or five of their tracks. Like they're seriously my favorite vibes right now. And this was the Sticks and Rope Scro remix, my remix uh, originally by Honor Scouts. Um, check it out, I'm really excited to play this one out. It's kind of a more low key chill vibe. It's not like, well, that drop was crazy. Uh, if you like this video and felt like it was entertaining and cool, please like and subscribe. That would really help me a lot. Uh, check all my other stuff out on Spotify if you like melodic bass music. Uh, thank you. I love you. Have a great day. Get some exercise. Go outside. It's not healthy to be on your computer all day long. Why do I feel like I need to give the internet health tips as a music producer? I have no idea.